fantastic. But I'm going to start sharing my screen. Please let me know if you can see. Um, and share, and we should, yeah, we should be seeing it now. Please let me know, Divina, if you can know. see it. Hopefully you can. We can um, see it. Fantastic. Good, good, good. And there's going to be, there's a link to this presentation as well in the chat. So it's the interactive presentation. This is how IT tools. And hopefully you will find it really, really uh, useful, interesting. For, uh, a little bit of food for thought. And please use the, the chat. I love seeing what people, even if you disagree, you don't like things, please let, you know, you do things differently. It will be absolutely fantastic to hear uh, from you. Uh, as Avina has said, I'm head of NFL and digital lead, Kim Steely, um, um, Legal School in Cambridge. And everything I'm going to talk about today is things that are practical and things that I have actually used, not just during lockdown, but over the last few years and actually been extremely useful during lockdown. And it's making me think as well about the importance of digital tools, not just because we need to teach online, but what we can do as blend, blended learning as well. And so this, let's get started. And as you can see, I got a little bit of um, sky because I really believe that when we use digital tools, we can make some magic happen. And something that really, really, really happens with the uh, with the kids. And let's see how that can happen. But first of all, a little bit, you know, that is, I want to see, I don't like doing, you know, using digital tools as a gimmick, just because it looks good and because it's gonna, it's a way of waste, not wasting time, but use up time. I think that's wrong. I use it because I really believe in it and it has to be very well structured. So I always think what I really want for students is to be fluent linguists. This is how they, they measure how good their language is and they measure their achievement. And for them being fluent linguists means that they can speak. And with all that, what they get is some kind, when that happens, is when the magic happens. The uh, meaning thing or the important thing is how can we do that, we, how can we make that happen? And I don't think it's not really rocket science. All that happens really with great teaching, ingredients of great teaching that makes the students as they make progress. And when the kids make progress, the confidence uh, increases. That's the key. Once the confidence in thing increases, then it comes back to for them to make more, even more progress, and everything becomes part of a nice continuum. And, and I think that uh, in that the key thing, the key here is the great teaching and the ingredients of great teaching. And over my career, I've always been fascinated by Rosenstein principles and how but just by following that, you can have really good, amazing lessons. And that's basically, that's what it, this is about. How to make great teaching based on Rosenstein uh, principles and how we can incorporate digital, digital tools into the, those principles as well. Then. So, so we start, well, let me say first, let's do, go back here. I just would like to do a little bit to start with a little bit of a poll just to see basically how you're feeling about this thing, uh, these things today. So a little bit of Pentimeter. Um, Oh, yes, here it is. So when you think of digital tools, where, what do you think? Sorry, I started by saying stress. So you can go to www.menti.com and if you can use this code, which is you can see on the screen very quickly, it would be lovely to hear from you. Digital tools, digital learning, what do you think? What comes back to your, uh, to your mind? I've I've written a stress myself because I know from some colleagues that some people really get stressful about it. Uh, what do you think, digital tools? Things that come to your mind. It would be lovely to see a few, um, yes, a few things from you guys. So can you uh, comment on it? See if you can, let me know you can access it. Hopefully you can. So, Mint. Oh, great. Engagement, fun. Oh, yes, positive. So I was trying to, yes, enjoyment, fantastic. Good, good, good. Okay, that's good. Exciting, good. Okay, we are in the same, that's brilliant, great. That's really, really positive, fantastic. Because some motivation, that's, yes. Because not, every, not everybody, that's great as well, good, good. Not everybody is that positive, so it's good. Like how engagement comes first thing, 
uh, brilliant. So we'll give it a couple of seconds and then we'll move on. Practical as well, gamification, formative assessment, absolutely. Uh, like fun, definitely is coming in, exciting, requires stage cap uh, capability. It does. I'm going to show you hopefully today very, very simple things that you can be done in a very simple way. Uh, brilliant potential, yes. Uh, practical and it's lovely to see that my stress is moving away. Okay, that's absolutely fantastic. Good, good, good. Okay, yes, I agree with all this and that's why I started using a lot of IT uh, in my lessons as well. Right, so coming back to, um, to the presentation then, we're talking about great teaching uh, and really the great teaching is the motor for, for, for this, the engine. Um, I really want to emphasize the area of uh, how with great teaching we make magic happen. And, and, and that's why I have the background of all the stars and nighttime there. Right, so um, let's start a well thing. I think I've got another little poll here for you before we start as well. Right, let's me there. So this is the one we just done, which is uh, great. And if I move on to the next one, what digital tools have you used to lock down out of curiosity? So obviously you're quite excited about it. Any particular digital tools that you have used? It would be really good to know. I'm going to take a note as well, see if there is anything there. So it's basically the same. Yeah, Kahoot. Good. So I'd like to see if there's anything probably that new that I'm going to have. What a uh, world, Blueket, Quizlet, Clifibity, brilliant. Kahoot, Spiral, brilliant. I'm going to talk about Spiral. I'm going to talk about Blueket as well. Flippity, Ed Puzzle. Yes, Ed Puzzle is absolutely brilliant with videos. Yes. Other ones, Quizzes, Quizlet, Spiral, Ed Puzzle. Yes. Teachmate, Padlet, Deck Toys, brilliant. Learning apps, absolutely. Um, a Mentimeter, yes. I mean, I'm using Mentimeter. Probably you can see as well how what the potential it has in the classroom as well. Uh, good, good. So, if anyone would like to say something, look at is yes, actually, it's really good. And all these apps, actually, I'm going to mention them today at some point. And hopefully, we'll show you as well how I use them in uh, the actual classroom or okay, in a plenty learning uh, environment. Okay, so nothing else coming in. Let's just start then. So, what makes race teaching? Rules and principles are full of fantastic. Uh, um, ideas how to do that and um, let's start then with modeling first thing you know is the modeling which I think is so important in mfl how can we apply digital tools in modeling uh, as you were saying and most of most of you have already talked about digital tools motivation factor less uh, what i like about the digital tools allows me to take the lesson on my classroom outside uh, take the classroom to their own uh, houses, uh, take languages outside the classroom. It gives them independence as well. So what it does is like takes my little me, my teaching outside and puts them in the bus when they go to the bus at home, when they go home and they can access it to, uh, access it to the phone or to any other media. And I think that's quite important. I think it makes it so special and that's why I think the magical, uh, the magic happens. So one of the elements, one of the um, uh, stages of learning when I actually use uh, um, technology is actually in modeling. Okay, so let's why, how we do it in modeling. I try to use in, uh, in lessons, I'm trying to use a quite a lot of um, sentence um, builders. Okay, so just to share a little bit of my, of my uh, the way we do um, the teaching in here at King's. So we do have the sentence build us a little bit like that, that we practice. And the first thing that we do in, in, in the teaching process is the modeling of these sentence builders. And of course, one of the things I can do that, I can do that obviously with the kids freely in the lesson. But what uh, IT allows me to do is that allows me to take that modeling of the sentence builders to the next level. For example, with a screencasting or with Loom. So this is something basically we've been doing, of course, during the lockdown. We do use OneNote as our um, provider, basically as our platform to share lessons with the students. This is very important. If you're thinking of doing using digital tools, you need some medium and a wire to share the links and share the, the, the different activities with the kids. 
you cannot just be using email. It could be Google Classroom, or it could be like I think many schools have gone with OneNote. This is where we've done with OneNote. So one of the things, for example, that we tend to do is like you can see here is that I record sometimes bits of uh, of a PowerPoint or a smart board or whatever basically that I use in my classroom, and I create. I use Loom. To do that, uh, one app is basically screencasting, and what I do is little videos. In normal circumstances, I would do this in lessons uh, with the kids in front, in, in front of me. During lockdown, this has been a brilliant opportunity, opportunity to imitate what I would have done in lessons. But what I learned from the previous lockdown, the videos were fantastic. It's like, why only use them during lockdown? Why cannot we use videos as well as part uh, as a part of a blended learning approach? What we started doing is that we have now these little videos that um, that uh, they are linked to activities. Uh, it's like little listenings, little dictations, the things that you normally do in lessons that the kids can keep on doing and practicing and hearing the modeling of the language when they are home. And I think that's very, very powerful. Also, it's brilliant as well if a child is not there. So it's not just a question of, oh, we are teaching online. We do everything that we do in lessons, but then we take it a step forward and the kids carry on doing this uh, in uh, at home, for example. So that's one of the things that very powerful for modeling. Another thing that I use, I started using really last year during, uh, uh, during lockdown is Bitmojis. Uh, and with, I'll show you a little bit, Bitmojis basically, I use them. But if you noticed in the previous, in the previous, um, if we come here again in the previous uh, my example here, I have you notice I have a bit more here. Uh, all my lessons come with a little bit like yeah, so that's my bit moji. And every single we do things like listening, we reading, and everything with feedback. I actually use my own bit moji, and that's becoming you know a little bit of fun element and connection with the kids. I absolutely love. I wanted to show you for modeling in particular is speaking bitmojis. Okay, how you can make your bitmojis speak and actually create a listening activity with your own voice over the bitmoji that you can again use for modeling as well. So this is uh, basically how you do it. You I use it basically um it's a photo speak on my mobile. So I do have my my, my bitmoji, then I use photo speak, which is an app. In my, mo in my mobile, and then suddenly this is what happens. It takes literally three to four minutes to create, and it will create a video, because what PhotoSpeak does, once I create my Bitmoji, which is just a photo, a static photo, what it creates then is a, a normal, if I can come down here, sorry, just taking some time. Oh, here it is. It's taking some time to, uh, okay, to download. Hopefully will, yes, just take some time. Yes, that is then. Okay, so, so this is one of my lessons. And here it is. These are my Bitmojis. What PhotoSpeak does is that you take your Bitmoji, you are in PhotoSpeak, and you create a video of your Bitmoji speaking. You record your voice, and then what happened is this. You can hear it. Normalmente, para ir al colegio, Uso el coche porque vivo lejos en las afueras de Ili. Okay, so basically, it's my Bitmoji and it's created into a video and it moves the uh, it moves the uh, the mouth, it moves the eyes, and it's just my voice. So what I do there is that I upload that into YouTube, and then what I have is a fantastic little. You can see this is just thirty seconds. This is another one. This is, uh, I think, this was about one minute and a half, and then, and then, because it's just basically uh, a YouTube, I insert it in my platform, which is OneNote, and then I create exercises to do with that. So either it could be a dictation, write down what you hear, uh, write down, translate what you hear into English uh, in the two in the two videos. So that's a very simple. It just took me three minutes to to create that. Then yeah, and it allows me to personalize the learning. I, for example, in this case, I have a very easy one, first one, but the second one is definitely more uh, uh, more challenging with more sophisticated vocabulary. And that was for a year nine lesson, and that was part of their prep, of their homework. Okay, so the homework was to do this listening 
with it's not just a normal listening that would have done from the textbook it's something very specific for that particular year group for that particular set and at the same time is modeling through me which i think is quite powerful there uh, once you use Bitmoji, then you can also do a lot of a lot of uh, app smashing, like in learning apps. Some of you have used uh, have mentioned learning apps. I'm a huge fan of learning apps. Learning apps is um, basically a um, a website that allows you to create interactive games, or well, not just no games, activities. Should I say they're not games, really, they're activities that you basically once you create it, you can share through a link or you can embed, okay? So one of the things you can do in learning apps, for example, is to have a video and you can have a closed test. So this is another really nice activity. It's exactly the same video, but now the kids have to listen to it. Mi ciudad es bastante pequeña. And they need to fill in the gaps with the, thing, with, with, with the information. So what you have from the same video, you're doing modeling through listening, either through one note or you can create something like in one uh, in learning apps. Uh, I think I'm going to get rid of this. Yeah, I'm not going to read this one then now. Uh, of course, as well, now a possibility would have done quite successfully is to use Bitmojis as well in forms. Uh, when I create, um, I, I we were in basically in lockdown last time in in in, in, in was it March yes a year ago. I started creating what uh, a lot of listening and and using forms. But then in forms you cannot really have a listening. You cannot really have a link uh, embed an audio file. So one of the things I started doing is my own bit more is talking and then activities based on the actual listening. And the kids really really work really uh, really um really love them and really engage with these activities and it was more fun than just doing a listening from the book and sometimes what i actually what i did is even to uh, read the script from the listening from the textbook and add a few things in there so that's a really nice uh, thing as well that can be used and then the only thing you need to do is to share the link with the students so there again in one note this will be embedded really nice way of doing uh, modeling that you normally do in the classroom in different ways using uh, IT, uh, IT tools. Okay. So that takes us to the next step. Next step in Russian shy, which I think is great. Once we do our modeling of structures through listening, uh, it could be um, normal uh, repetition, dictation that you can do with the videos, or once you, you know, as a supplement to whatever you do in the lesson, it's time of structured and guided uh, practice. And that's basically all the different uh, tools, there are more, but this is basically my favorite ones that I use for guided practice. So the first one uh, I use is still Task Magic, I think Task Magic is brilliant, I really like it. The problem with Task Magic is that it's not it's great for to use in the classroom but you cannot really uh, the kids cannot really uh, interact with it okay because it is not a, a web-based um tool but then i would definitely recommend textivate so textivate is the sister uh, of um of time magic basically it is is it's basically done by a uh, but Lockworth, the same creator, and I really love Textivate. It allows me to take all those sentence builders, all those structures uh, that we've managed to practice over and over again in the modeling process to the next stage, which would be uh, start working with it with it in a structured way. So one of, for example, one of the activities that the kids uh, like with Textivate is I have, this is from year 11, that actually we did like exactly uh, last week, and uh, it is a test. They can play. It. Hay muchos problemas en el mundo que debemos solucionar. Okay, they just can basically uh, you can use it as reading, and they get to fill in the gaps. Uh, or just could be just reading. You don't even have to do it as a listening. You can try what you think it actually goes in there. Hay muchos uh, bastantes. If they obviously then they check if it's right. And they can go from next and next activity. When they finish one, there's a sequence of activities that you create with text today, and you move to the next one. Very, very powerful indeed. I think text you have to pay for it, it's not free, but it is very economical. I think it's about 
hundred uh, hundred and fifty pounds, uh, something like that, for a whole um, for a whole department. So I really think it is uh, worth the money. Another one that I use a lot for guided practice and it's, it's very very simple is wheel of names. So let me show you another one that how it works. Once you get the presentation, actually there's a tutorial video on how to do it step by step. I'm just going to give you some examples of how it can be used as well in a blended learning scenario or as a, as a tool that you can use in front of the whole class. So um, let's look at it. So this is basically what Wheel of Names does. The idea of Wheel of Names is that you're supposed to have names of people here and then someone has to pop up and answer a question. I think that's very boring, very rubbish. I don't use it like that. But this is basically how you do it. I put all my sentence builders and other different tenses and I do a lot of retreat of practice with this actually. And sorry, right? Yes, and then what the kids have to do is to translate it. So we do this first as a whole class. In, uh, in front of the class, we go through the, through the wheel, we go through all the different options, then the kids either in um, mini whiteboard or orderly have to basically translate this for me, the structure practice. If it's a very good class, what I tell them as well, or some of the kids in the class, can you extend it? Can you tell me something in the past tense? Can you tell me something in the future tense? I use this all the way to A level. So this is very simple way just using a wheel of names. But what is really good is about how it can be used in a blended learning situation, which I'm gonna show you how. Once you create your wheel of names, basically, again, like with learning apps, you just can share the, the, the actual tool. So what I do again, using my platform, which is OneNote, and it always takes quite a lot of time to, uh, to uh, oh this wasn't this was actually quite quick okay so what we do is that firstly we do uh, a little bit of uh, here yes here it is we do firstly as a whole class I demonstrate it it's also part in a way of the modeling because some one of the kids actually will will say it in Spanish I can ask I uh, I can uh, repeat it myself it's part all of the same kind of process but it's a structured practice. And then I put the link in here, and then the kids can play with the wheels. They click on the, on the link, go back to the wheel, and then they play in pairs. Uh, in my setting, in my school, we're very lucky. Every child is bringing now their laptop. But even with some kids, sometimes, like in September, it wasn't compulsory to bring a laptop, so I was determined to do, to do blended learning. So for some of my kids were doing, so we're using the phone. So they actually, they come here, they, they use the, you just need a computer, people and they just test each other and I think that's actually very powerful they know what to do because first you do it as a whole class and then what they're doing is in first and normally I play a uh, piedra papel tijera which is a um, stone paper and scissors so basically every time before they translate the sentence they need to play piedra papel tijera what is it okay and the winner is the one actually that has to speak so because the speaking is actually something to celebrate it's not for the losers and and basically yes that's the idea and they will start getting points so that's something to play in a blended learning in a very simple uh, very simple way right so that is another one and uh, another thing i started using is classroom screen in conjunction with uh, um with um uh, wheel of names. So classroom uh, screen. I don't know if you heard of it. I mean, uh, well, I'll go to here another uh, example, but let me show you. So it takes me to the, mm -hmm, going to do it very, it didn't go to the one I really wanted. Okay, let's try. I think this one, there was a wheel, a wheel of names there. Basically, classroom screen creates a screen for you that allows you to have, like, for example, here, like the names of your kids. And then allows you to embed, because you can embed media here, any video, any uh, learning apps as well, anything with uh, basically with an iframe, you can, or a uh, URL, it will embed it into the same screen. And then what you have is that in the same, uh, in the same screen, you got that, and then obviously you got this, and then you have another one with the names. You can also have in, will uh, in a, in classroom screen you also can have a timer in here so what allows you sorry is to have in the same screen without having to open a lot of different tabs 
different things or elements uh, working. You also can have dice in here as well. So you can have dice, you can have the names of who is going to speak, you can have your uh, wheel of names in there. So all that is part of the same experience. Very good for teaching in front of the class, and this has been very good for online teaching as well, to do a lesson interactive when I was sharing my screen with uh, the kids. So something uh, quite good as well. Uh, Flippity, some of you have been using, been talking about Flippity, love Flippity, and I'm gonna tell you as well how I do it in blended learning. Flippity allows you a little bit like learning apps, allows you to have different activities that are on, uh, they are basically uh, online and that you share with an URL. And then uh, what it do is the first, we go through the activities a little bit like with Wheel of Names as a whole class, but then I put the links into here, Okay, and what they have to do now is working in pairs. Can you say a sentence with the expression that pops up for the list? I'm going to show you a little bit how uh, it would work uh, would work in there. So the idea is they come here, and then this pops up, and they need to tell me a, a, a sentence with fui de tapas. The next one, and they need to say a, a sentence with fui de tapas, another one, and another one. Uh, another one that works really well as well is I, I can ask them, go to the groups of two, and now they need to tell me a sentence where these two items pops up. Then two, these two items pop up, uh, four, and uh, you can make it more difficult if someone is doing re this really, uh, really quickly. I can say to a pair of my students, okay, go to groups of three. Now you need to tell me a sentence, or between both of you work out a sentence where you need to include these three, uh, these three items. Four groups of four, four, four groups of five. So you can make it more and more complicated. How uh, and you need to include different tenses, and it has to make sense on whatever the topic is. So that's something very simple to do. Again, I'll demonstrate first in lessons. This is with Flippity. I create it and then I share it with them. And then what I tell them basically is they just practice it in first. And that's work that works as well really really well in a very simple way and the other one as well is the run the randomizer the randomizer is really good in flippity because what allows you is to have different columns okay in here okay and they need to create sentences according to the columns when they do this and again we do this first all of this like a demonstration all, all in class and then two years ago i did sailing i like it uh, in a nutshell, I like this one, for example, wouldn't make sense. When that happens, can you tell me something from here that makes sense on the first column? The first column, and they have to translate it, or they can make it, uh, yeah, make their own sentences. Then they go to another one, and then create another. And every time they get with different combinations, and then they do it in pairs as well, orderly. Okay, so that's another really good one. Same kind of uh, of uh, idea, really, with the uh, with Wheel of names. Then, of course, I need to talk about learning apps. I talked a little bit about learning apps. I think it's absolutely brilliant for blended learning and for uh, for languages. There is here as well um, a tutorial on how to use it. So I just want to show you a little bit uh, one of my favorite ones. I'll show you one with a bit more and the one that is extremely simple to make is about with the translations. So once we've done the modeling, I give them, I create this for them, I share the, the link, and what they do is they translate it for me. If they click on the I, I always give them the initial of the words. That really helps, especially by low ability students. And then at the end, I, I just they do a screenshot and they just basically um, um, print it into their OneNote as proof that they have done it. So that is a really good one. And there are a lot of things you can do with learning apps. You can do crosswords. Uh, so it's a really nice digital world and doing the old fashioned crossword in a worksheet. Normally the kids are not that interested at the moment that I put it in here. Uh, suddenly they become, they love it. And everybody's quite competing to see who finishes first. So I do this for two and three groups, like the course, car, or some. And the good thing with um, basically with uh, learning apps is that at the end, they always get feedback, immediate feedback if it's right or if it's wrong. So you can do a crossword and it takes literally five minutes to create. Well, the way we work with this as well is that we work as a department. So when we create everything and this, because we all use one node, we actually use the resources from each other and we just actually practice them. And I think that's actually uh, quite good as well to do 
Uh, another thing is we do, Geniali, that's another fantastic one as well for guided for, uh, for a structured practice, where you practice over and over again all those structures. Uh, there are a lot of tutorials from Maria Lirot, the Swiss, Swiss magazine in MFL Literati about how to make a digital, sorry, escape rooms. But actually, I'm only a bit, I just go to the easy one. And the one I like is basically the, the board games from Geniali. Again, there is a video here with a tutorial that from a YouTube channel where I explain how to make really quickly in 10 minutes a board game. And for example, this is one of my, uh, yes, one of my favorite ones. I use a lot, my snakes and leathers. And I use all, the, all this from year seven to year 13 because basically the kids move this and the way we do it is that they just need a computer for every two people. It does work in that in, in a uh, phone as well, but obviously it's a bit tiny. Again, my students bring the computer. I put the link for my Geniali into OneNote, as I did with the other apps, and then they need a computer between people, sometimes three people, but they could be a little bit crowded with the computer. One uh, person basically uh, moves all the set. They do have a dice. All this is a template from uh, that you have from um, Geniali, which is free. By the way, the moment Textivate is the only one that needs to pay with all this. And every time they land into here, they're doing again the translation of those sentences that I want to practice over and over again. If it comes to a level, I've done this with questions for the syllables. And I even put here translation past papers that they have to work out groups, but in a gamification kind of game situation. And that works really, really well as well. So that's a really nice one uh, to use. Uh, I do have here to for people who like PowerPoint. There is a link here to ten. Uh, when you come here, you got ten lovely templates that you can just download uh, for games, which I think they are quite good. I don't tend to use PowerPoint myself, but uh, some people really like them. And another one which I really like. Uh, well, let's do the one. This one. Oh, I did this with my class. Literally with my year um, one with, I mean, this is with my year 13, but one single was my year nine an hour ago. But this is just to show you could be with a level. So again, you share the uh, the geniality with the kids. This is a board. And what they do is that they click here. And these are questions about the monarchy in Spain that they need to answer. They're playing in teams with the a, a, a levels. Just click on here, play there, and you will get uh, the color. It's not green. Yes, there it is then. And they will get the color that they just claim. So basically the idea is that again, one person has got the computer and the other people basically answer the questions and interact with each other orderly. So that's a really, really nice one as well. You bungees gain there, all these templates, they're free. Basically in uh, in um in Geniali, and this exactly the same idea. Every time you got one person on each side. They just need to go around, they need to come to the center, and they need to be answering questions, which in this case, again, was my year, uh, my year 12. Uh, questions talk about, habla de los trabajos que pueden, yes, about feminism, about the role of women at work. So a really nice way when you finish a topic to do oral work, and in the case of little ones, to do translation of instructors in a fun in a fun way that really works, uh, really works well. Uh, of course, I also use quizzes, and I'm aware of the time, there are so many things. Uh, I use uh, quizzes for translation practice. Uh, there is another guide tutorial here when you click on it with a tutorial of how I use it and the best for uh, how to create quizzes. But I use it as well for order practice because, and I don't think people are aware of this a lot, hopefully, we see, hopefully, it will work because uh, this is a quad, this is an old one. so. Hopefully will be working. Yes, with quizzes. Yeah. ¿Qué peligros y ventajas tienen las redes sociales? You can record yourself. And then basically what I do is I record myself, it's basically questions about the GCC course, and then the kids just write an open question, whatever they would say. So this works really well before doing auto work rather than arriving on questions. Then I give them again, once I create the quizzes, you share it, you share the link, and then what they do is they put the headphones on, and then 
five, 10 minutes, do some practice. Listen to the questions, so it's listening, they need to understand what I'm asking them. And then they need to do a little bit of practice. Uh, this is what I would say at the end, in a real situ uh, situation. And then we do proper oral in partners, or with me, or with the Spanish assistant. So I think that's a very nice idea of using, not just for quizzing, for retrieval practice of vocabulary, but to take it a little bit a step further as well. And of course, we got Blueket, Quizlet and Memrise. Uh, what I just wanted to show you with Quizlet, we were talking about how we use a sentence builders to start with. It's like a starting point before the kids become creative with the grammar. And let's see, this is obviously uh, it's taking some time to look at. Yeah, so this is what I do is that we, sh we share all the sentence builders with the kids into our OneNote. And every sentence builder that we have, we created a course. So that course goes with this central builder here. And then obviously that course, this is another one on holidays, works with this sentence builder here. And this has really uh, helped us to structure the GCC course. The whole GCC course is based on sentence builders and Quizlet direct links. And then I can use these direct links as well into Geniali. I can put them into classroom uh, classroom screen if I want to, because I can embed it. And the kids use this for practice of the vocabulary. And we put them in chunks rather than individual words. And that, again, really helps them learn the vocabulary, again, with the guided practice. And of course, someone was mentioning tech toys. I uh, don't think we have a lot of time for tech toys, but I definitely wanted to mention it. There is another video on how to create tech toys. I'm just going to show you very quickly what Tech Toys does for anyone who doesn't know. Tech Toys is like for me, like the gamification to the next to the next step. Basically. What do you do? This one you're allowed to create is free for free Tech Toys. And once you create, Tech Toys means a deck. You create these decks. Any of those things is a deck. And they're a little bit like escape rooms. And you go three for free. And if you publish them, like the ones here, these don't count as your three. So you can always have three with have been published, plus as many as you want that have been published. Published means obviously that other people can use them. Uh, I don't particularly, I don't mind. And this is a little bit how it looks. Uh, it looks, sorry, no, I didn't want, ah, oh, sorry. My mistake, I didn't want to uh, edit it. Sorry, I, I don't have time to show you. I just want to show you basic, to show you how to do it. I just want to preview it. So this is what it, what it, it does basically. This is a preview thing, so it's very little, but the kids get this in big screen you create a deck of activities. And what I like about the tool is that you can take the activities from, uh, from Quizlet. Here again, we got the uh, concept of app smashing and use them in uh, to create new activities in here. Okay, so basically you don't need to enter uh, any more information. You just, in minutes, you can create crosswords, you can create a match, you can create lines activities. Okay, so I'm going to show you down there. The idea is you create a deck and the kids have to complete the deck normally by getting keys or to escape the castle, escape the island a little bit like in a simulation of a game like escape. Room. So basically this is, I'm stuck in the castle. You need to try to, to, to rescue me by completing the different activities. And uh, so the first activity, as you can see, they start becoming visible as you complete the, the, the deck. So you cannot just, the kids cannot just go from one to the other. They have to follow it. And of course, I'm going to, uh, I'm not gonna follow it because I'm the teacher. And this is basically what I want to show you. It creates, for example, this one is matching. But this matching, I didn't have to enter anything. I just took my Quizlet courses and embedded them or spoke them into tech toys, which I think is very powerful. And it created all this for me. But also it created lines. He created memories, he created choices, he created against a match, but you can do much more than that. You can do oral, and I'll show you how, for example. You can, one of the activities that you can do with it, that only everybody is aware of it, you can also embed your wheel of names. So for example, this is my wheel of names with pictures. And what the kids have to do here, they basically, in this particular activity, they have to spin the wheel five times, and every time they spin the wheel, they had to say a sentence with a hobby that came out. I did this two weeks ago, actually, with my students. So once they're ready, they click on here, and they, they got a microphone, they just need a microphone, they click on it, it will start recording. Okay, they go about so 30 seconds, which is plenty of time, especially for the little ones, and they submit it, and then I can have a look 
or what they basically they they uh, they for spoken. So as part of the activities they have to do to complete the deck, not only they can do the matching with vocabulary and everything, they can do oral and they can also do writing as well. A little bit you can ask them, for example, instead of a uh, on uh, like in the oral, uh, record your voice, write an answer. So I've used all this even with my year 13 when I have, have gabificized uh, the past papers and I've done readings and translations from past papers into a big choice and suddenly they love it and a little bit of a spicy lesson on a Friday afternoon. Right, so I don't, um, that's a little bit with it, uh, uh, with it there. So that was uh, another one which is pretty good is the power of questions, checking for understanding. And for that, obviously, this is all the things that we normally do it. Call, calling, say the any better. How can you incorporate in questions? How can you talk about digital tools, spiral? And I think we already talked about spiral, Mentimeter. You can ask questions, give me your answers. It's a really nice way, especially for those kids who want to speak at least have a voice and to check for understanding. I don't have time to go through a spiral, but uh, I also have a, a video, a tutorial on how to use uh, that one. And then it comes to retrieval practice and is really easy. The next main thing from Ross and Shai, how do we do retrieval practice? But actually, that's the important thing is about how often you do it. And at this stage, so I think I need to I'm gonna make this bigger. Yes, presenting it. At this stage, what I do is I use all the activities I did in the guide, in the uh, instructor practice or guided practice, but as a starters. And, and I re, I what I do because they're links, what I do is I go back to them, my bill of names. So every two or three weeks, every um every month, I'm gonna go and use a wheel of games, wheel of games from a topic that we did two weeks or one month ago. So what I do is I use all the other tech toys, one of the other activities, and I reuse them as a starter, as one of the lessons to retrieve the practice. So that's basically what we do. So I use at this stage, the same apps as we did before, all the flippy till learning apps, all the other ones, I use it in here. And I, this, is, this is a link to one of my uh, posts to my blog, Actually, I give you more ideas on how to maximize IT tools for the tool practice. So there is a link, direct link to my post here. Of course, the spiral, a quiz, a quizzes as well. Spiral is another way of the tool practice. Um, bank, uh, and another one I think would be quite good as well is Padlet. We use Padlet for creative writing, and we've seen it to the people, but I also use I want to show you a little bit as well how can we use Padlet, which is very good for retrieval practice, to create a revision schedule. Obviously, this year we don't have the year 11 thing anymore. But for example, last year, what I created is with my kids is a revision schedule of five weeks with links to every, to Quizlet, to past papers, to uh, different things, you know, from day one, day four, day six, and things that they had to do. So what it do is they have, this retrieval practice for them, and they got a little bit of quotes that begin to motivate them. Uh, they have, and during five or six weeks, they were preparing for the exams and telling them what to revise every time. And I think Padlet was quite good to create these things, uh, these things for me. Fine, so that is uh, coming in there. Um, that's retrieval practice. And then the next one would be fluency. Once we do a lot of retrieval practice, once we do a lot of uh, all this uh, structured production, the kids start becoming fluent within the topic. And I think at this stage, what I teach tools I use. I use Flippity again, but I just want to show you now how I change it a little bit. So what we do now is that I gave, for example, a word, and it's like to um, talk about fluency, give me a whole sentence using, using three tenses, using the word tren, for example. So they need to be spontaneous with the language. And by that stage, hopefully by the end of the learning process, after weeks of weeks of practicing, this, practicing the vocabulary, we can start moving uh, here. Causa contaminación, three tenses. I want you to use subjunctive and you need to use causa contaminación. So that's another nice way of using some of the same tools that we did before in other stages into fluency, just by uh, expecting the kids to speak about something uh, uh, spontaneous at the time. So, uh, of, of course, using creative tasks with Padlet, 
Uh, and then I like Padlet a lot because everybody can see what everybody is uh, writing. So I think this example, for example, was videos. They had to do a cooking thing. They had to cook uh, some Spanish uh, palmeritas and they had to explain the process. That was at the end of the learning uh, the learning uh, process. That's why it was in the group thing. And everybody was basically um, Yes, watching it and they could comment uh, comment on it. And it was the whole class in there with the final result and their videos. So at that point, Padlet, brilliant for fluency. Uh, Flipgrid, I have a Flipgrid for every uh, single uh, of my classes. Uh, what I do is that when we finish a topic, I expect them to do presentations, basically, like my favorite program, Tourism transport it, anything that we do. So at the end of the learning process, now I want you to talk just for one minute, two minutes, okay, on uh, about a particular uh, topic. Flipgrid allows you to use tickets just to record themselves. Before they had to have it as a video, but now they can just do it just with a, a inset voice, which I think is fantastic. Some of the kids are really, really shy to see their faces in there. And it's not public. You only can see yourself and you only make it public if you want to, okay? Uh, what I think is very good for fluency as well is collaborative writing with uh, Google Slides or uh, Microsoft Slides. So basically, I create a Google Slides, um, well, no Google Slides, I use Microsoft Slides at point, and then I create a slide for every single student, a group of students, and they're all writing at the same time in a particular slide. So I can actually see what everybody's doing. That was really good during the lockdown. And another one that was really well is Google Earth projects as well, when you come to the fluency area. Uh, this particular project I'm gonna show you is actually a reading project, so it's not the best example for fluency. Um, but what I'm, because that was the one I, I've, I've been doing it as reading, but what I would expect now, it takes ages to download, so I don't know what we're gonna have time. It's always the same with Google Earth. Uh, but um, what the kids can do actually, they can actually create a project themselves where they're actually talking uh, about a particular um, city or they do, uh, they do a tool. Google Earth uh, allows you to, especially for the topic of tourism, uh, topic of holidays is uh, in any year group, it's absolutely fantastic. And it's taking, I think it's because I'm sharing, it takes a while, but not this long to share the screen, unless it is down here. I don't think it is, it's just not. Oh yes, here it is, okay. I was just being impatient. Uh, and then basically what I create is, so you can see probably the potential with the kids. We are, it's a tool of Madrid. And then in the, this was as a reader. I created the presentation. The kids, I, this is my own writing. This was for a year eight class, okay? So not a lot of writing, but things like the passive, voice to start with, which I think, you know, I think they could actually uh, cope with. And the kids had to go through the tool and they had to do a summary in English of what they were reading. That was the idea. And then the what is good about that is that they can later they go on, they can actually move away from here, actually start going uh, and visit the, the palace and they can go over there and they can get out a little bit and get a little bit of visit. And then they tell, they tell oh, sorry, because I'm sharing, sorry for this. As a presentation there. They can then, they go, then there was another slide that was taking them to another area of Madrid. So that was Museo del Prado. Again, another thing about the Museo del Prado with a, key, a link to a famous uh, um, um, picture in, uh, in there. And uh, again, you know, yes, another really nice, then it took them somewhere else. But what I'm expecting to do next as an activity is them to create the Google Earth thing. Okay, and that's something we did actually with our Erasmus students. So they can actually have a voice over explaining orally, okay, what they are seeing. A little bit between a little bit of a, a tour of their own city, of uh, another town in, you know, in Spain, in France. I think it's very, very powerful in data as well. Very good one. And um, yes, I think that is, Mm -hmm. That is, and then of course, another thing I want to talk about very, very briefly as well, how you can also incorporate project-based learning and international and uh, international uh, internationalism using digital uh, tools as well. 
So one of the things is our approach is taking languages outside the classroom, which is why we're using a blended learning approach, because we want to take the languages experience outside what is this classroom here. I want them to take it home in their phones, in their one notebooks, but also very important how would you do with your partners? So at the moment we're doing Erasmus projects. We know Erasmus is not going to be happening anymore in the future, uh, but what is very good as well is to have a uh, collaborative projects or exchanges linked to a project. I think that's quite good. And in the past we used the twinning. At the moment we cannot use the twinning either, as you know, but anything with the technology, with Google Slides, with a uh, uh, Microsoft uh, with, with PowerPoint, what can you do with Teams, with Zoom? What kind of experiences can you give your students with partner schools? Can you do a, a, a little bit of um, a project with them to motivate the kids and to show the kids that actually the, the, the country exists, that children are at the other side, basically, of, uh, of the screen? I think that's very powerful using the technology, especially at the moment that we cannot travel. Even when we travel, what we, uh, what we started doing is doing exchanges. We've always done them, but we started linking them to projects. And I think I've got one here. This is, I mean, I don't know what I'm showing you. I'm, sure I, I'm very sad to show you this because this is from eTwinning on our project. And actually, uh, we eTwinning, we, we cannot do it anymore. But I'm sure there are other ways as well, other platforms that you can use. Like you can use uh, a Padlet, for example, to collaborate with with uh, your uh, with your school and the idea is to create a project and as i was saying even when we did proper exchanges that we cannot do at the moment because of the current situation the fact that we did a project together before going really made the whole exchange a huge success and i just to finish my presentation and my computer's gonna be uh oh. So be worried, it's not going like really slow. I think I open too many things. I wanted to show you about making memories. So, for example, what we did two years ago, the last time we managed to travel to Spain, we participated in the carnival. The kids have been working on a project before going to Spain, which was very special. The kids felt they knew each other. Uh, we were using technology, we were using Padlet to work on different aspects. And then we went to Spain. The kids created while well, we were in Spain this outfit. And then we went to the Spain, to Spain, to the Spanish carnival, and this happened. We're not going to the seven minutes. Que te cuenten, María José, su proyecto, ¿cómo va? So this is our project. Look on TV, by the way. Pero fiesta traen una una poquita desde Albacete hasta Villarrobledo. Okay, so just get a little bit of an idea. This is a moment idóneo para poder unirnos y para poder compartir los ratos, los momentos buenos que tiene el carnaval. Los estudiantes. Right, can you imagine the face of our students when we're doing this? Uh, it was our students with the Spanish students in the carnival uh, after being, having been collaborating with, uh, with, with the project beforehand. And I'm convinced, had it been for the project before, uh, beforehand, this wouldn't have been that amazing. And, and it's about making memories. And it's just, I must say, this is an interview that we were, the TV, uh, the local TV saw us and the interview was, they thought it was amazing that we had these kids from England in this little village of Spain. And, uh, and that's, wow, I think that's it. I went very, very quickly. This is my blog with a lot of ideas. I'm more than happy to answer a lot of questions. Obviously, I was, uh, yes, I knew that I wouldn't be able to, uh, to explain the processes of every single app because it would be another webinar on its own. Uh, would it would be really good, you got a couple of minutes. In the questions here, it's the last poll uh, here. Is there, I don't know if there's anything there at all that has basically, let me see if I can go. That was one of the questions we've done. That's the second question we've done. Is there, what do your tools can you use in a blended learning classroom? Is there anything there that has, I don't know, has captured your uh, inspiration at all? Maybe nothing. Or things that you think could do in a different way. I will be, you know, share some ideas would be really nice i don't know anything there or you can i don't know tell me lies i don't know how davina you want to play that i don't know yeah, if people are there yeah. yeah no um yeah i think that would be fun to, to put it on the menti so we so we can all see those um, yeah. yeah 
That would be great. And uh, I just thought um, it's great that you mentioned uh, the blended learning to end there because that's what we're sort of grappling with now, isn't it? It's our next, mm. our next phase. So um, though I thought there was some great ideas in there and, and the, the wheel, um, I do use the wheel decide, but I hadn't thought of it for, um, as a way to involve the, the students at home, actually. I think that, that will be really fun um, to use for the hybrid for the hybrid teaching. Um, but that was just extraordinary. Um, you've got through so much and uh, I'm so impressed by your energy and enthusiasm for all these different tools um, that, we can, that we can use. And uh, what was lovely is that actually the number of tools you used wasn't sort of too intimidating, but actually what you're doing with it is so, it was so lot. creative. <laughs> Um, so creative and uh, really innovative and, and really exciting. And I'm, I'm sure your students love using those different tools. And um, yeah.